Hello, my name is Dia Sharma, and today I'm going to be talking about my 2023 Comenius project. The project that I did was the two great epics, the Iliad and Mahabharata, the six faces of war. The two stories that I decided to compare and contrast was Iliad, a Greek epic, and a Mahabharata, an Indian epic. So what exactly is an epic? It is a long poem, basically. So the way it is written, it is more po poetry style. There are many similarities and differences between the two. Obviously, there are many differences because one is in Greek and one is in India. But there are many, many similarities and overlapping themes that I found when I read the two. And actually, in specific, I chose six themes to talk about that I found in my research. The six faces. When I read these two stories, I discovered six perspectives. And in order to show the perspectives for my product, I made six of my own original poems with an, with an introduction poem and a conclusion poem. Along with these poems, I made my own art representations of each perspective that goes along with it. Perspective one, him, the warrior. This perspective shows a man going to war. The sacrifices that have to be made when he goes to war. The idea of killing people. The idea of the lives being lost. The idea that only one side can win. The, the horror in his eyes, the tears on his armor, nor wrong, nor white to win, nor black or white to win, and he has to win. This red hand shows a soldier's hand covered with blood on it from the opposite side. Perspective two, her, the trophy. In these stories, women were seen upon as just trophies, just a symbolism of beauty and nothing else, just to be showcased. And men looked and frowned upon these females because in both of these stories, masculinity was a big thing and women were only seen as a symbol for beauty and the no substance. And when things didn't go their way, and war started happening, they ended up blaming it on the women. Even though these women gave birth to their sons, sacrificed their own self-respect, and supported them for the rest of their lives. But still, they still had to deal with these assumptions and the negativity and the hatred. All because they were female and not male. This art representation I made, the trophy, shows two beautiful golden flowers that depict the women's perfection and beauty inside as well as out. And when the men throw these allegations on them and just use them as an object, their beauty turns black because it's not pure beauty anymore. It's just a sign of hate. The third perspective, father, the rage. A father's true love is their very own child. In both of these stories, two soldiers had their own sons and they lost their sons sadly. But when they lost their sons, that anger was like no other. The anger of a father, drove the revenge. The hunger in their hearts for blood, the flames in their eyes, same as a lion, the way that they wanted to kill their son's killers the same way a lion kills their prey. The fierceness and anger these men had inside them after losing their own precious sons is the same fear you can see on the prey's face when a lion is about to kill them 
the drive for war was the theme of vengeance. The two warriors never actually wanted to go to war, but when they saw their sons dead, they had no other choice. The rage took over. Perspective three, son, the follower. Usually, when someone is king, they have to have a next heir to the throne. And usually, that is the son. And even if the son is not qualified or dignified, they're still given it. They're given the privilege and luxury. But sometimes, life is not fair. And that is a universal thing. Sometimes, even if you're worthy of it, you don't get it. That's exactly what happened in these stories. In the Mahabharat, a son named Karna, he was actually the son of a god, but his own family abandoned him. But he was still loyal to the family that raised him, and he was a charioter's son. So yes, these two sons had the true love for their own family's embrace. And family is the ones that stick by you no matter what. That's what these sons felt for their family. Perspective four, king, the supreme one. A king has a lot of great power, but with great power comes great responsibility. It can go either two ways. You can be an amazing ruler and think the greater good for your people or the power can get to your head for greed and just more power and power. And all of the power lies within the king's hands. And their decisions can lead to greater outcomes. If the king is blinded by his own life, he won't be able to see the rest of his people. But if the king is too good, he might be taken advantage by his own. That's the hard thing, the balance. And at the end, the decisions can lead to the greater good of the people or it can lead to all hell breaking loose. Perspective four, the Almighty. God is a relative theme in both of these stories. Why? Because both of these are mythological stories. That's the true mythological element of God, the Almighty. In both of these stories, the gods are the one that oversee all the human activity. And when humans don't get their way, they blame the gods, that the gods, this was the gods' fault. But in a way, the gods are there to guide them. And most of the power is in the gods' hands. My final thoughts. The idea after comparing and contrasting both of these stories and seeing these six relatively overlapping themes, it shows the true reflection of human nature. It shows all the emotions we feel. None of us are just black or white. We all have different layers, have different aspects to us, and it can all be seen depending on the situation. And yes, these two stories are seen as different. One is Greek, one is Indian. But in reality, there are so many similarities because in reality, it shows the true reflection of human nature. It shows how we are all the same. We are all co connected no matter what. I'm going to be reading some of my poetry that I wrote, and this is the last concluding poem. The truth of it all. There are differences in the two, but nuances of human lore. The layers of war intertwined into the pages of these epics. Epics that shape the idea of humanity. Gives the true reflection of human nature. The layers of the deep thoughts each one of us has the ability to convey. These epics, giving us an insight into the psyche of humans. Greed, jealousy, anger, hate. The negative aspect. Love kindness, compassion, and divinity, the positive aspect, the emotions we all feel sometime or the other, in the past, present, and future.
in the web, space, and time. Our skin and words and rituals are different. In the depths of mind and heart, we are all the same. No matter what, no matter the life situation, no matter how we are, we're all human at the end of the day, and we are connected to one another. Thank you so much for listening.